I came in full of optimism, right? Because I already had this great looking 3D model and I had hardware and breadboards that worked. And I thought that um, it was going to be very simple to go and get that 3D model into a, um, a workable box. And certainly I went and, um, you know, in the first week I made a box. I was like the cranking right away. The one thing was that the keyboard was a harder thing to make than I thought it was going to be. You know, I'd take apart some toy keyboards and remove the little rubber switch pads from those and put those in. And it's, it just didn't feel right. It just didn't feel very good. So I went and I did another revision on it. I've been, made many revisions to that keyboard. That was really the thing which took the most time. And finally, in the end, I'm like, I'm running out of time. I really need to get this done. So I went to one of my test keyboards, which I was ripping the rubber pads out of, because that's the one part I can't make for the switches. I'm like, okay, I'm going to make my dimensions the same as this keyboard. And I did that, and it worked. But that took me until the end of the project to get to that point. I really thought, I can do something original. I can do it my own way. I can do it right. Well, I don't have enough time to do it right. I have to do it the way that's already been proven to work. And hopefully when I get this new assembly done, I'll have all the pieces I need to go and build future keyboards and I'll be able to replicate that and use that over and over. So that will hopefully be my, my manufacturing master and I won't need to do too many uh, changes after that.